we can come today and learn your word, that we can gather together to study the Bible and to learn more about your goodness. Lord, thank you for the beautiful sunshine and thank you for everyone that's here today. Help us have a blessed Sabbath in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Church family. Good morning. Very close. This morning's uh, uh, tithes and offering are going for local church budget. The uh, uh, says is, is entitled Tornado. Some of us have seen major disasters and lived to tell about them. But on June 8, 1953, the west side of Cleveland, Ohio was hit by a major tornado. Wow. Pastor James Hoffer was a teenager at the time. The Hoffer's house was not seriously affected, other than the two by four sticking through the roof, a garage leaning almost off its foundation, and a yard full of glass shards. But the houses down the street were completely destroyed, and the neighborhood and neighborhood were looked to, uh, looked like a war zone. A baby near us was picked right out of her crib and smashed against the wall. All in all, many either died or were hurt. The signs had, the signs had been there. Eerie greenish hue in the sky, followed by a golf ball sized hail and a massive storm. Fortunately, the Hopper family was safe in this, and the sounds as they, and the sound as they fled to the basement. When the three, uh, when three, then three years later, a fire caused serious damage to the same family and had to move out to a rented to rented quarters for several months. Our possessions are precious to us, but in perilous times our lives are much more value. What value do we place on your possessions, your home, your vehicle, your income? Jesus is coming. Let us stand our, let us send our wealth on ahead to his kingdom. Today we're investing into his kingdom by giving to the local church budget. Will the deacons now come forward?
Dear precious Heavenly Father, please uh, uh, be with these uh, tithes and offerings as we bring them into your storehouse. Please uh, uh, bless them and send them forth so that we can uh, uh, spread this end time message to you, that uh, uh, this, this community that you want us to spread. Please uh, uh, be with us and bless these offerings. In your name I pray. Amen. 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 Now it's time for a children's story brought to us by Holly Bailey Wilson. And if the kids would come forward, today's uh, lamb's offering is being collected for International Children's, International children's Club. Thank you. going to share as a children's story, and I wanted it to go along with Bruce's sermon as much as possible, but I just couldn't think of a story that fit. And then I was impressed yesterday morning as I lay in bed to go check out one of the books that I have on my bookshelf that I've read in the past. And for those of you who have never read these books, I would strongly suggest that you do so. But be prepared to feel very inadequate when you compare yourselves to the commitment and faithfulness of the people in these books. It's called Jesus Freaks, and they have a couple of books. And we are told in 1 Peter 2.9 that God will raise himself up a peculiar people now, peculiar, do you think that means that we're going to be odd? That somebody looks at us and necessarily thinks, well, that's just a strange, weird-looking person. It's because they're, they have love for the unlovely. It's because they have a faithfulness that regardless of what it costs them, they will remain true to God Amen. to glorify and honor his name. That's the peculiarity that he's looking for. Yeah. And so I wanted a story about a child who had that peculiarity. And I went over and I opened it up. And see those pieces of paper in there? That's just how I found it. And I thought, okay, I'm going to open it up to one of those pieces of paper. And the very first one that I opened it up to said, The Courage of a Child. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, thank you, Lord. I appreciate this. So I'm going to share that story with you. Now, a lot of times we think of martyrs, those who have sacrificed so much for the cause of Christ or given their lives, as people who lived back in Jesus' time or maybe during the Dark Ages. We don't think of them as very recent, but that's not true. There are martyrs all over the world today, even now. Amen. We have it easy right now. 
And we complain over the little inconveniences that we have. But this story took place in China. Mm. Back in the time of the Red Guard, that lasted from like 1965 to 1969. And this little girl was five years old. So I'm guessing that she's probably about my age right now and she's still alive. Her name was Xiao Mei. Do you like dark, damp places? I don't really. Especially they're usually chilly and uncomfortable. Well, Xiao Mei found herself in a dark, damp jail at five years of age. Wow. Hmm. Now, the reason she was there was because her mother had protested when their pastor was being taken away to prison because of his faith. And because she protested, they grabbed her and they put her in jail too because she was a Christian. Just because she was a Christian. Now, she had a five-year-old daughter and they didn't have anywhere else to put that five-year-old girl. So she was hauled along with her mother to a dark, damp jail cell. Do you think she was very happy in there? And she showed it. She cried, she whined, and her mother tried and tried and tried to comfort her, but to no avail. She just wasn't happy. And the other prisoners were like, really? How can you do this to your daughter? You need to get her out of here. What kind of mother are you? Even the jail guard said the same thing. He said, you know what? You could get out of this jail if you would just deny your Christian faith. Say, I will not be a Christian anymore, and you and your daughter could leave this jail. Mm. Well, with her daughter crying, and the fellow prisoners making her feel like a rotten mother, and even the jail guard saying, you could get out of this situation, the mother finally caved. Wow. And she said, okay, I will do it. Oh, no. They let her out of jail along with Sal May. And two weeks later, she stood on a stage in front of 10,000 people and denied Christ oh, no. and said she was not a Christian anymore. Wow. They were walking home, free now from jail and the persecution of the government. But as they walked home, Sal May said to her mom, Mommy, Jesus is not satisfied with you today. Wow. She's five years old. That broke her mother's heart. She said, but I did it for you. You were miserable in the jail. You cried all the time. I did it for you. And Sal May said, Mommy, if you go back to jail, I promise I won't cry anymore. Wow. The mother felt so bad for denying Christ and setting this example for her daughter that she went back to the jail guard and she said, I was wrong. She said, I am still a Christian. My daughter had more courage than me. Wow. She said, and guess what they did? They put her back in jail and Sal May with her. But Sal May was true to her promise and she did not cry anymore. Wow. That was a pretty big sacrifice, especially for a little five-year-old girl Amen. to understand that. So if you ever think, I'm too young, you know, these sermons, they're not for me. They're for my parents. They're for older people. They're not for me. You're wrong. That's right. They're for you too. Yeah. We are told in Isaiah 11 about the wonderful future that we have in heaven where all of the animals will cohabitate without, without danger, without attacking each other. And then it says, a little child shall lead them. There will be no fear. The little child can lead the lion and the tiger and the bear and cuddle with them and fall asleep if they want. But when I think of a little child shall lead them, I think right now, today, you can lead people. You can lead Amen. people by your example. Your friends, your siblings, your parents, and 
adults, a little child shall lead them. Shall we pray? Our dearest Heavenly Father, we thank you that you can touch and change each and every heart, regardless of age. And Lord, we pray for that peculiar faithfulness that we will be true to you, regardless of what you ask of us. All to your honor and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. series that uh, is going on. Thank you for the uh, our many volunteers. Please uh, thank you for uh, Pastor Bela who's doing such a wonderful time, a uh, uh, wonderful job representing you and the message that you want him to bring. Please uh, be with Bruce this morning as he uh, brings a, a message of, uh, uh, of hope for the end for uh, uh, to dare to be a Daniel, to, uh, to have the faith that can uh, uh, withstand the uh, the trials and the temptations and come out even stronger. Please uh, be with us and help us to remember to keep you first in our lives. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Matthew 10, 32 and 33. Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him I will confess, confess also before my Father which is in heaven. But whoever shall deny me before men, him I will also deny before my Father which is in heaven. And now we'll be blessed with the worship and song brought to us by Dennis Bailey and Holly Bailey Wilson. The song that we're going to sing, we chose because it has a very powerful message. So more than anything, I want you to listen to the words. Right now we have an opportunity to make a difference and have an impact on people's lives. But we can continue. If something happened to us today, 
would we continue to have a powerful impact on the lives of those left behind. Well, good morning. Good morning. Happy good morning. Sabbath. Woo. What a beautiful morning. Yes. I just wanted to tell people, everybody here knows it, but anybody on Facebook that hasn't been watching the prophecy meetings, um, we have one tonight at 7 o'clock, and then Monday through Thursday at 7 o'clock, and then next Sabbath morning, and then Monday through Thursday again at 7 o'clock. Please join us. They're awesome meetings, and Bela's doing an awesome job with them, and you'll be blessed by them. Amen. 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 And I also want to ask everyone to uh, pray for Larry. Um, he's at the hospital in West Branch. Um, he's having some heart issues this morning. He's having some chest pains. Larry Bodai. 
So please pray for him and Marie. And uh, anyway, with that, how many of you have somebody that you admire and really look up to? There's too many people in this world, though, that have somebody that they look up to because he can throw a football 70 yards <laughs> or hit a lot of home runs in baseball or drive fast in a car or, or be an actor in a movie. That is not a re good reason to look up to somebody because many of these people lack a lot of character, unfortunately. That's right. And that's not what we want to focus on with somebody to look up to. How many of you know someone that has a character that you totally trust? That you would say, watch my house while I'm gone. That you would trust totally with your family, with your children. How many of you have somebody that you would trust with your finances? If you own a company, do you know somebody that you trust so much you would say, I'm going to be gone for two months, run my business. And you are totally confident that when you got home, you would still have a business. <laughs> well, unfortunately, there aren't a lot of people we can probably trust that far. I feel very fortunate that I have a wife that I trust Amen. very much with my finances. I don't question her with her checkbook. Anytime I want to look at it, I can. I don't really like doing that, so I don't. But for a wife and or a husband, we should be able to trust them Amen. very much. Yes. Or there's a problem in your relationship. Okay. Getting back to my question about who do we admire? There's someone in the Bible that I admire very much. And his name's been coming up a lot in our prophecy meetings. Yeah. Yeah. And it's Daniel. Yeah. And so today I want to have a sermon about Daniel and Hananiah, Azariah, and Mishael. Amen. Because they're men of integrity. Amen. And that's what we need to be, as men and women of integrity. Right. So please join me as I have opening prayer. Dear Lord... I pray that you be with us today. I pray that you send the Holy Spirit into this place, Lord, and give me words to speak, that I can remember what I learned about you this week, Lord. And we just pray for these meetings, Lord, that people's hearts will be touched, their eyes will be open, and we'll want to be men and women of integrity, that people will look up to us, that we will be able to show them Jesus. Lord, we pray today for Larry and Marie. We pray that uh, this isn't something serious, that it's going to cause some serious effects, Lord. Please be with them and bring them back, Lord, and help them to trust you fully and be with the doctors and give them wisdom today. Thank you for this beautiful Sabbath morning that we can be together, that we can study your word, and we can have a closer walk with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Well, the people of Judah weren't always faithful to God. And unfortunately, because of some of the choices excuse me, that they made, God had to let them go into captivity. And Daniel and his three friends, it's easier for me to call them Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego because my whole life that's what I call them. And I, I did find it strange that in this story, when you think about it, even Daniel refers to himself as Daniel all the time. And he refers to Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. But anyway, the, the four um, Hebrew worthies were brought into captivity. And I'm assuming, I mean, it doesn't really tell us, but I'm assuming their parents either died or were taken captive somewhere else or something happened to them. But they were young men. And I don't know how young they were, but I'm assuming mid-teenagers maybe. And they were brought into captivity. They were brought to Babylon. And I don't know about you, but when I was 15 years old, if I would have been taken away from my parents, I mean, I was, what, 55 when my dad died, and I felt like a little kid all at once because I didn't have parents anymore. They were teenagers, and they lost their parents, and they were brought into a foreign country, and they were taken to the king, and... And his um, leader there, Espinaz, said, okay, you guys, this is what we're going to do. We're going to turn you into Chaldeans. 
We're going to send you to school for three years, and we want you to eat the finest food and drink the finest wine, and we're going to treat you awesome so you can be, so you can, you know, be of value to our country. So he went to them, and the first thing he did was try to get them to eat off the king's table. Well, they had a problem with that because the king's table was filled with things that they didn't approve of. So they stood up to him and they said, um, could you give us a chance, give us 10 days, and give us just vegetables and water, and then check us and see how we look. So 10 days later, they come and looked at him, and they looked better than all the other wise men, Amen. the other people. So they said, okay, we will give you vegetables and water, and we can teach you the way of the Chaldeans. Three years later, went on, and they had to go before Nebuchadnezzar. And Nebuchadnezzar was so impressed with these three, these four, that he was in shock. They were so much more healthy looking, and they were wiser than any of the other prisoners, than any of his other wise men. Amen. The Bible says, as for these four young men, God gave them knowledge and skill in all literature and wisdom. And Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. Now at the end of the days, when the king had said that they should be brought in, the chief of the eunuchs brought them in before Nebuchadnezzar. Then the king interviewed them, and among them, none was found like Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Therefore, they served before the king, and in all matters of wisdom and understanding about which the king examined them, he found them ten times better than all the magi magicians and astrologers who were in all his realm. Amen. Is that amazing? Yeah. And I totally believe in the health message that it's, you know, God wants us to be healthy. But this isn't just the food they eat. This is because they were faithful to God and Amen. God blessed them. Amen. Do we want to be blessed by God? Yeah. Let's be obedient. If we're obedient to God and do what he says, we will be blessed. In Daniel 2, it talks about when Nebuchadnezzar had the dream. And he couldn't remember his dream. So he called in all his wise men. And he said, tell me my dream. And they're like, we can't tell you your dream. You tell us your dream and we'll tell you the interpretation of the dream. And Nebuchadnezzar's like, you're trying to trick me. You're trying to buy time here. I want you to tell me the dream. And they couldn't. They're like, no one can tell you that dream. No one knows what you dreamt about. Mm -hmm. Nebuchadnezzar was so angry, he was going to kill all the wise men in all the land. I mean, back then when you took the king off, they didn't have to go through Congress and through lawyers they just chopped your heads off. That's right. He was going to kill all the wise men. Well, some of the wise men were even killed. And they came to Daniel. Ariot came to Daniel. And Daniel says, what's going on here? He wanted to know why Nebuchadnezzar was so angry and what was going on. He explained what happened. Daniel says, there's a God in heaven that can tell your dream." And he says, let me go to the king and talk to him. So he went to the king and talked to him and said, will you give me some time and I will talk to God and I'll be able to tell you your dream. So Daniel went back to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and all four of them prayed and begged God for an answer to what they dreamed, what he dreamed. So in his sleep, Daniel was given the vision. Of the, of the statue and what it meant. So he went back to Ariat, brought him to the king, and he told him what he dreamed. He described the statue, and Nebuchadnezzar was super impressed. He says, what does the dream mean? And Daniel actually told him the interpretation of the dream. You are the head of gold. The chest of, of um, silver, the thighs of brass, and the feet of iron. He told him about his dream. He described it to him. 
And Nebuchadnezzar was so impressed because none of the other wise men could tell him anything. And he was so impressed by Daniel, or more yet, by Daniel's God. Amen. And it, isn't it incredible to you that Daniel had that much faith in God? Amen. And God cared that much that he gave him the vision, Amen. that he told him. So at that time, Nebuchadnezzar actually believed in God. But unfortunately, I think it was more maybe a little bit of fear of Daniel's God and not love of Daniel's God because it didn't last long. And he had a brilliant plan. And this is what happens when people are full of themselves. They have a brilliant plan that's going to benefit them. So Nebuchadnezzar had a statue built almost 100 feet high. 100 feet high. Can you guys imagine 100 feet high, how high that's going to be standing there in front of like the windmills by our place. A golden statue. And he commanded all the leaders in this country to come and bow down to this. Well, you guys have all heard this story many times, but this is one of the awesomest stories in the whole Bible, Amen. I think. When they went to the statue and everybody bowed down, we know who didn't, right? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego remain standing. And wouldn't it be easy for you to say, oh, I dropped my cell phone. Oh, where is it? You know, we can get part way down to save our necks. Because I can, I can lead people to Christ. But if I'm dead, I can't. I mean, we can reason with ourselves. Things like that. Yeah, we can rationalize. We can rationalize away many things that are not right. These guys just stood there. Amen. And I think they probably stood tall. Amen. And I think they were very willing to die for God. Amen. Well, obviously, the king wasn't very pleased when the other um, guards come to him and says, You know what? These three Hebrews won't bow down to this idol. They're in defiance of you. So I'm thinking, they were thinking, this is going to be good. We don't like them guys anyway because they're know-it-alls. You know, they're jealous of them. Yeah. I mean, I think I can see why they'd be jealous of them. They come from another country, and the king looks up to these people. So they don't like them. They want to get rid of them. Well, we can get rid of them here. Look what they're doing. They're in defiance of you. So Nebuchadnezzar, you know, he really liked the three. So he uh, gave them another chance. He went to them, and he said, if you guys will bow down when you hear the music playing, save your lives. And remember what they answered? And last week in Sabbath school, Steve brought it up, and, and I had already planned to have that in the sermon, and I just, I mean, there's times that I just think, it feels like the hair on my neck will stand up when I hear this. When they were so willing to um, stand up and say what they believe, in Daniel 3, 16, it says, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this manner. If that is the case, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace. And he will deliver us from your hand, O king. But if not, this is the part I love best. This is one of the most powerful things in the whole Bible. But if not, let it be known to you, O king, that we do not serve your gods, nor will we worship the golden image which you have set up. Amen. You think Nebuchadnezzar usually got what he wanted? Yeah. He was a king. And like I said before, it wasn't the United States. We don't have to take three and a half years of, of going through lawyers and our justice system. If the king says you're going to be killed, you're going to be killed now. Yeah. They didn't care. Yeah. They were willing to die. They were willing to have their heads cut off. Yeah. They were willing to be thrown into that fire. And they didn't care. And I don't know about you, but I hope if I ever die before Jesus comes, I hope I die in my sleep. That's what I'm sort of hoping. I really wouldn't want to be thrown into a burning fire. And I think about some of the people that were, the martyrs that were burned at the stake. And I just think, how... They were singing praises to God while they were dying. That's encouraging. 
And if you have ever got burned by something, I mean, one time I was building a fire in the basement and I couldn't get it lit good, so I tossed gas in there. Oh, no. That didn't feel that good. And all I lost was my eyebrows. Can you imagine being in a fire? When Nebuchadnezzar was so angry, this, this, this just cracks me up, sort of. He's so angry, he makes the fire seven times hotter. It's like, what was the good of that? Actually, you would suffer less long. That's true. But he was so angry, he made the fire seven times hotter. And he was like, you know, how dare you defile me? Don't you know who I am? I am the king of the biggest, greatest country in the world. I'm the king. And you're going to defy me? How dare you? So he makes the fire seven times hotter. He has the strongest men bind them up. Throw them into the fire and remember what happened. The men all died from the fire. It was that hot. They couldn't even get close to it. They were thrown into the fire. The king looks and he's like, didn't you throw three men into the fire? I see four. Wow. And he saw it. And this king actually knew enough about God that he said, the one looks like the son of man. Amen. He realized it was Jesus in the fire with him. Yeah. And that's the only way that the people burned at the stake could be singing praises. Amen. Because Jesus was there with them. Amen. So what's more important, to keep your head and lose eternity with Jesus? Jesus who died for us and gave his life for us? Our lives here are not that important. Yeah. How we live is important. But our lives here are not that important. I've heard Bala say several times during these meetings he's willing to die for Jesus. How many people do you know are really willing to die for Jesus? Are we even willing to be inconvenienced for Jesus? Have mercy. If we're Christians, we better be. I can even distract myself sometimes. When Darius, Darius, I've struggled with this all week because I've heard it both ways, and I, I like Darius a lot better, but every time I don't really concentrate, Darius pops into my head. <laughs> but Darius was now the king because the Medes and Persians, just like God predicted, predicted overtook Babylon. That's right. Well, this amazes me. Another country takes over Babylon, and who rises to the top of that country? A foreigner. A foreigner. This is incredible. Can you imagine that in the United States, that they would bring somebody in that uh, didn't even speak American English, you know? That's just amazing to me that Daniel rose to the top, even in this new country that overtook Babylon. Darius knew enough of Daniel that he knew he could trust them. So Amen. he had 120 princes or governors, and Daniel was, there was three people over all of them. Daniel was one of them, and he was even thinking of putting Daniel over everybody. Second in charge in a foreign country. I can't even imagine someone having that much. Wow, did he have trust in Daniel. Amen. For good reason. But we know the story. It's very familiar. It's one of the first stories of the Bible that almost everybody knows about. Daniel and the lion's did. Well, we know what happened. The people that he was above were very jealous. When do you think in the Bible it talks about somebody else that was very jealous? Satan. Satan. Uh... Started it all. Satan. Cain and Abel. Jealousy. Bad decisions. Well, we know what happened. They schemed, well, let's get rid of this Daniel. I hate that guy. The king thinks he's so awesome. This guy isn't cool. He don't hang out with us. He don't do things with us. I hate him. Let's get rid of him. So they devised a plan and they said, oh, king, oh, awesome, wonderful, wonderful king. They went and they just buttered, buttered him all up and we're all over that, you know, tell him how wonderful he was. And Darius already knew he was 
awesome. But they, they went in there and they buttered him all up and they said, King, let's make a decree that anybody that worships anybody other than you be thrown in the lion's den. Good idea. I'm worthy. So we know what happened. Daniel went home, opened his windows, prayed. He didn't care because he worships a God, not Darius, not anybody. He worships God, and that's all that really matters. So Daniel prayed. They saw him praying. I'm quite certain they probably had a stakeout going on. You just watched Daniel's house a little while. Everybody knew he was faithful to God and that he was going to pray. So they caught Daniel praying. They brought him to Darius. Darius felt horrible. He's like, what have I done? He thought the world of Daniel. And he knew he'd been tricked. But this was the other thing that when I was reading this, I was thinking, you know, he's the king. But it's like, oh, the king of the Medes and Persians wrote a law. We can't break that law. Well, why can't we break that law? What are they going to do to him? He's a king. But he thought, well, i got to save face. So I have to keep my word. So they took Daniel, and he even said to Daniel, your God will save you. He even knew that. But he still let him throw Daniel in the lion's den. We know what happened. Daniel was in the lion's den overnight. The next morning, the king comes, couldn't sleep all night. He says he didn't even eat. He fasted. He went to the lion's den, and he said, Daniel, are you okay? And he says, yeah, I'm okay. And Darius even expected it. But it still has to be a little bit of shock. In Daniel 6, verse 20, it says, And when he came to the den, he cried out with a, lam lament a lamenting voice to Daniel. The king spoke, saying to Daniel, Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God, whom you serve continually, been able to deliver you from the lions? Then Daniel said to the king, O king, live forever. My God sent his angel and shut the lion's mouth Amen. so that they have not hurt me because I was found innocent before him. And also, O king, I have done no wrong before you. Amen. Wow. Does that same God exist today? Amen. Amen. I love that story of Daniel. It's, it's so incredible because it just, it tells us how God will bless us if we're faithful to him. Amen. How God cares about every little thing we do. And with Daniel, to be lifted up in that country like he was, they even recognized how incredible a person he was, how incredible a God he served. I want to be found that faithful. Amen. Like the song Holly and Dennis sang, the footsteps that we leave, do we want to lead people to Christ or lead them away from Christ? Amen. You know, when I grew up in McBain and, and when I was a, a kid, People were pretty conservative. And unfortunately, it changed a lot. And I know it can happen in the Adventist community, too, when you've got a large group of people because people start looking at people. We don't look at people. We look at Jesus. Amen. Jesus is our example that never changes. Amen. Amen. If something was wrong when I was five years old to do, then it's still wrong when I'm 45 years That's old. Right. To do. Okay, 65 years old to do. <laughs> Our God doesn't change. Amen. People change. Our God does not change. Amen. Oops. Daniel was removed without injury while his accusers and their families were crushed by the lions before they hit the bottom of the floor in the lion's den. Yeah. It wasn't the lions weren't hungry. Our God closed their mouths. Amen. Amen. 
True success in any line of work is not the result of chance or accident or destiny. It is the outworking of God's providences and the reward of faith and discretion, of virtue and perseverance. Fine mental qualities and a high moral tone are not the result of accident. God gives opportunities. Success depends upon the use made of them. Amen. You know, when Holly and I were dating, I remember that it was very, very hard for me because I was seeing the truth and I was convicted of the truth. I believed the Sabbath was God's holy day. But I was raised, I was 36 years old, I had four kids that for years I brought them to church on Sunday. I went to McMain Christian School. For 36 years, I went to the same church. Mm -hmm. I had the same friends, the same parents. My parents were not happy with me mm. when I accepted the truth. Mm. They felt like they failed. Mm. And I remember one day, I was driving the tractor. I could take you to the field I was in. I still remember. I was mowing hay. And I was thinking about it and thinking about it. And all of a sudden, it come to me and says, you know what? You call yourself a Christian, right? I felt I was a Christian. What am I willing to do for my God? Mm. And I thought Daniel was willing to be thrown into a lion's den. Yeah. And I don't want people to make fun of me. I don't wow. want people to think I'm weird. Wow. Er. <laughs> I don't want people to think he's doing it just for her. And I was accused of that. But I told people recently when I shared my faith, if something happened to my wife, I will be faithful to my God. By God's grace, yes. He who loves father or mother more than me, and he who loves son or daughter more than me, is not worthy of me. And he who does not take his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. Wow. He who finds his life will lose it. And he who loses his life for my sake will find it. Amen. I want to spend eternity with the people I love. Amen. Amen. Therefore, Whoever confesses me before men, him I will also confess before my Father who is in heaven. Amen. Praise Amen. the Lord. But whosoever denies me before men, Amen. him I also will deny before my Father in heaven. Heaven is cheap enough. Yeah. Our lives have to be dedicated to following our Lord. Amen. No matter what the cost. Amen. We never want to be the reason someone wasn't saved. Have mercy. We want to have it our goal some way stand before our Father and we hear well done a good and faithful servant Amen. can God trust us mm. <clears throat> dear Lord we just pray that we will be found faithful Amen. Lord, we pray that you will come into our hearts. Lord, we pray for our church family. Mm -hmm. That we will be totally committed to leading others to you. Mm -hmm. 
that this church will be full of people that love you and are willing to serve you. Lord, help us all to put you first in our lives. Help us to make it our goal that when we get to heaven, we'll be surrounded by people that we help bring to you. Amen. Lord, help us to be willing to inconvenience ourselves. Lord, help us to be brave, to be willing to confess you before men, Amen. that people will see Jesus in our lives and how we treat each other. Lord, help us to be forgiving, loving, kind, sharing, God-fearing people. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. You won't be opening your hymnals because this song is not in your hymnals. So that's why it's up on the screen for you. How appropriate. Dare to be a dear. Shall we all stand? regardless of what is thrown at us, that we will live for you, that it will be evident in all of our interactions. And we thank you, Lord, because we know we can trust you to give us the strength when those times come. And we pray that people will come to a saving relationship with you because mm -hmm. our example pointed them to you. Mm -hmm. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.